I'd like to discuss tool sets. This seems to be a very, very important topic. Um, I don't really engage in, in the whole, uh, um, you know, one tool philosophy um, type of thing. I believe it's a poor philosophy to why you would ever want to um, bring yourself into a situation um, where there could potentially be hazards and um, start off undergunned, if, if you will, or <laughs> in this instance, undertooled. So um, all the greats, all the woodsmen worth their salt had tool sets from Nesmik, Kephart, Morse Kahansky, Dick Prennicky, uh, Rutstrom, the list goes on. Uh, Kahansky, in one interview, someone was asking about what he would do with his axe, I believe, in this certain situation, and Kahansky replied, well, of course I'd have a saw. So, I mean, you, you got to know what to bring, and uh, if you're going to go out there with one tool, um, usually it's more of a fantasy thing. Uh, I, I don't really... Uh, enjoy that. Usually I find that there may be a, you know, plethora of different things that I might want to accomplish. I might want to do out some pan fish and I might want to, um, you know, craft a long fire and do some different things like that. Anyways, back on point, the tool sets. Um, usually it was uh, when we're talking about woodsmen like ourselves, usually we're talking about uh, there's the Nesmic Trio, which is a type of thing. But what we're usually talking about is we're usually talking about a small knife, okay? And um, usually these are uh, jack knives, um, can be uh, multi tool. Um, Swiss Army knife, okay, all right, and then what we what we usually have is a um, more of a belt knife, okay, and this is usually um, I I would venture to say most people most woodsmen are going to have a uh, three to five inch range on that, okay? And then what we have, I'm gonna come over here, okay? Then what we have is usually a large tool, all right? And um, your large tools, uh, we're talking ax, um, machete, of course, saw. So, what are we going to do with these? Well, it's important because you sort of have to know what are you going to do in the woods. But if you're anything like me and probably how most of you are, you do a multitude of different things. Um, you're usually not just going out to, uh, you know, get some brown trout. You might be have the intention on um, harvesting uh, fat wood on your walk in. Um, maybe um, making a walking stick. Maybe you want to find some good wood to bring home for spoon making. Uh, on top of this, maybe your destination is the small creek with the brown trout, but what you're doing in between or after you get it, maybe you're going to cook it up right there. So this brings about some different things. So when we're talking about small, okay, The small knife. My preference is the uh, is, is is the stock knife. Okay, some people like a trapper. Of course, there's the Barlow. All right, etc. These are you know the slip joint knives. Of course, we have the uh, the Buck One Ten and uh, different um, Spyderco. 
Obviously, I've reviewed the uh, Spyderco Paramilitary 2 uh, for bushcraft. I've got a few videos on that. It works surprisingly well. The nature of the, uh, the handle, this G10, even though it does have the uh, steel liners in there, um, lateral strength can be maybe not the greatest. Uh, if you're going to compare it to maybe the lateral strength of something like the Buck 10, which is a heavily built beast, the downward pressure on, on a knife like this, usually to breach that lock, not break it, but breach it, I believe was somewhere in the 160 pound range, which is quite a bit. But, uh, you know, uh, this, this, this is a lock back. And uh, generally these, these, these are as well. These are good small knives, okay? Small tools. I'm even gonna throw the multi-tool in there. Okay, and you uh, would obviously have, um, uh, let's see, Leatherman, um, I know Sog has some of them, um, uh, a lot of these, okay, and of course there's, there's the Wave, there's the Sidekick, there's the you name it, there are all sorts of different ones of these. These are all great tools to have. I would recommend any one of these to be in part of one of your kit. The one thing I like about my Stockman is that it is in uh, chrome vanadium, which means then it can also, uh, um, with good regularity, <laughs> very good regularity, throw a spark off of a rock. Should I decide to start uh, a fire using the flint and steel method, or perhaps the chips are down, the cards are down, if you will, and that is my, you know, one of my only methods for fire is, is using a piece of rock, a river rock, if you will. Uh, you can get, you can get the, uh, the Trapper and the Barlow. They're older styles. Usually you can get all those in that type of steel. That's another quality to look for if perhaps your uh, fixed blade belt knife doesn't have that steel. It's not necessary, but it's always nice to have. Uh, of course, the Buck 110, uh, yeah, if you're going back far enough, you're, you know, uh, 425, 440. Of course, now it's uh, 420. You're not going to get the spark. I have a video about that as well. I tried with a Buck 119 to throw a spark with a rock. Not going to happen. Spider Co., same thing. You know, we have the S30Vs, VG10, that type of stuff you're not gonna get the spark off that. I also have a video about CPM3V, my uh, Mac V Sog Bowie by Bark River. I can throw a rock with that with good regularity uh, to get a spark on some char cloth to start a fire. So some of these steels do work. Sometimes you may have to find the right rock where these more simple carbon steels that are usually found in these older style slip joint pocket knives, uh, pretty much about any piece of crude flint's gonna do. Multi-tool, same thing. Uh, we're talking stainless steels and those. Um, so, uh, the small knife. This is great to have. This will do a lot of your work for you. Uh, maybe you're opening up packages, maybe you're cutting twine, uh, cordage, whatever it might be, doing out small game, doing out fish, um, doing out, out uh, large game as, as well. You don't really need much. And our ancestors used a you know flake of obsidian or uh, flint to perform those tasks. So in general, you're not going to need this large knife. A large knife does help breaking down some large game, but it's not always necessary. Next, we're going to call this the belt knife. Okay, and as I said, we're usually talking in, in the oh not three feet in the three to five inch range. I usually like around a six inch range. I find that works out good. Well, the reason why it works out good is because I have this. And this covers a lot of, a lot of the small chores. Uh, any type of intricate carvings or any type of uh, anything that requires more uh, precise work, Stockman. Uh, you know, our founding fathers, if you will, uh, generations of the past, they uh, would make a new stock for a weapon or an ax handle in the field. There's documentation of that with knives of this size. So the belt knife, you've got all sorts of different options in, in, in these ranges. 
Um, you know, you, you've got something like the BK16, which is good, 1095, right? So um, we can throw the spark with the rock. Maybe you don't have anything like that. Maybe you've got a Bravo, all right, 1.5. And uh, a knife of that size is around uh, almost six inches. Um, that, if it's A2, it's a little finicky with a rock, but I've got a video where I pull spark from it, so you can do it. Of course, it comes in 3V as well. Um, you've got the Buck 119, another good knife. Okay, 420HC, not really going to get the spark. And then, of course, you have all of your Moras, and, 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 and unless there are... In, a, in stainless steel. Uh, if, if they're in carbon steel, they throw very nice sparks. These are all great knives, okay, in this size range, and any one of these will do. Some people will tell you, oh, you got to have, uh... here's another good one. I hear a lot of people bashing this here. Well, you know, you see that guy that blasted it, you know, 56 times and it, you know, broke going through that cinder block? Well, yeah, but as we said, we're carrying other tools. If I need to break a cinder, cinder block, I'll use probably another rock or the you know, back of my ax um, to break a cinder block. I'm not going to use my belt knife. So uh, does it bother me that something like these two right here would be uh, what we would call hidden tang? Doesn't bother me at all. Uh, my favorite knife, the Mac V Sog Bowie, is a hidden tang. Of course, it's quite beefy and it's in 3V, but it's a hidden tang. I like the warmth and the balance that a hidden tang offers, and um, usually that, that does it for me. If you're breaking any of these knives, you're not really too bright. Uh, unless you get a lemon, which is, for the most part, sort of few and far between. But um, once again, our ancestors with a knife made like this, uh, would be passing down from generation to generation. There, there's no breaking this. Okay, these knives handle a lot. Of course, some people like some on the smaller end. Some people like even, even bigger, right? And that's fine because you have the smaller knife with you. All right, so moving on, now we're going to talk about another tool. Now, here's the bigger tool. So we have the machete, axe, and I'm not even going to put a hatchet in there, even though you call that a hand axe, whatever you want to do, um, bowie or just a large knife in general. So uh, many makers of these, many, many makers of these, um, you know, Linder, uh, Council Tool, Grand Spores, Husqvarna, uh, the Bowie knives, multitude of, uh, you know, K Bar, Ontario, Cold Steel, uh, you know, large knife, same types of makers. You can pretty much find about any of these in a in a simple carbon steel that will throw in it, throw a throw a spark. Especially if you're talking about the older axes and hatchets, where they were using more simple carbon steels, and even an S wing at. Uh, uh, they use 1055 steel. Uh, even that can get some sparks. Uh, a little more of the modern, there's a little bit of difficulty. Um, the council tool, if it is the 5160, not going to get a spark. If it's a 1060, you will. Um, of course, Grand Spores, whatever their proprietary steel is, isn't really reliable for throwing a spark. Machetes, absolutely. Of course, your bowie knives and large knives, it all depends on what steels. Uh, that you're using. So this here, where the larger tool is going to do the larger work. Can you do more of the refined work, the uh, you know finer tasks with these tools? Absolutely, and you should. You should know how to do it. But I still not going to carry one tool. Sometimes you don't want to mess around. You want to just make the feather stick, or it's easier to be cutting your cordage while you're setting something up and not have to be constantly resheathing something large or picking up an ax to cut it. But you absolutely can and you absolutely should know how to be able to do it, uh, you know, with these larger tools. And I'm gonna put a saw up here because even if you have a smaller saw, right, like a uh, folding saw, uh, of course there's the D-ring handle saws, 
which I really like. They're very rigid. Um, and then, then, then you have the bow. Uh, you know, of course, these usually, um, you know, pack up real nice. You can't do a lot of big tasks, but in an, in an emergency situation, you're definitely going to be able to feed a fire for tonight, for the most part, um, with, with any one of these saws. Of course, the bow saw packs up real nicely, too. The D-ring doesn't pack up as nicely as the others, but it is the most durable of them. And um, you can usually get these in some really, really massive sizes, uh, 36 inches, even, even bigger. Uh, and, and I usually prefer a pruning saw. Uh, Corona makes them, uh, they, makes a real good one. I sort of like that. Um, I want to say it's at least 20 inches, 24 inches perhaps. Uh, I really like that. I have a scabbard. I have a video where I have a, uh, show you a scabbard that I made. Uh, it's called duct tape, you know, for bushcraft tools or something like that. But, but anyways, um, the saw. The saw is extremely important. It doesn't do any other task than cross or rip, depending on what you're doing, uh, cross cutting. But the, what it does do, it does better than any other tool. It's not a jack of all trades. Um, it is a master of one, one thing only, and whether it's ripping or cross-cutting, it does it the best, and it's usually the safest. So what do we sort of learn by all these things? I mean, what, what, we're, what we're talking about is having a tool set, and the, and the necessity of a tool set, and that throughout history, uh, and even modern day woodsmen, if they're worth their salt, they've got a tool set. Of course, you can add other things on here, right? You, you can add the crooked knife, right? The, the spoon knife, if, if you will. Um, you, can, uh, you can add a gouge. You can add a dedicating, um, you know, uh, carving knife. Um, you can add a dedicating uh, uh, fillet knife. Pick your size, whatever type of fish, you know, the four inch, the six inch, the nine inch, whatever it is. Um, so you can still add more onto these. It makes life a lot easier. Um, and to a certain degree, it really does show your maturity. Uh, that you've been out there enough in the woods to know, yeah, I can get by with, with my six inch belt knife. Yes, I can get by with, uh, you know, my um, cruiser axe. Yes, I'm sure I could get by with my pocket knife, but I don't just want to get by. I'm out here to enjoy and to do things. Build up the confidence with all of your tools within your tool set. It doesn't have to be a trio. Uh, you could have five tools, four tools, whatever it is. Um, it's going to make everything a lot easier. And in any type of emergency situation, you do have backups then. Uh, you, if you do lose a tool, you do have another one, right? If you lose the pocket knife, maybe your multi-tool is in your pack. Okay, great. You've got a small saw and you have a uh, small knife. Maybe you lose your belt knife. Okay, not a problem. You have a hatchet on the pack. Okay, good, you know. So there's all these, it's a backup to the backup, but yet they can all function on their own, in their own scope. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.